Well, praise the Lord. It is a great day to praise God. And I have preached for 60 years the message of Christmas in this church. And now, I don't know, I want to preach to you another message on Christmas. Because it is a message that should be heralded forth in every nook and corner. You know, I uh, saw it in a different light. And that is the angels. It was a proclamation from heaven. Uh, and everything, every part of the message of Christmas, the wise men coming from the east, then uh, the angels singing, and then talking the angel talking to Mary and said, you're going to conceive. When she said, I know not even a man. And uh, then everything was divinely planned. Why? Because this is not a natural birth and a natural message. It is divine. So the angels told those shepherds who were trembling that night, you know, uh, we bring to you a glorious message. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And then from there on, when Jesus was born, his introduction by John the Baptist. John was baptizing people in Jordan. When he saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Now, it is a very, uh, I mean, important uh, statement with deep meaning and gravity. Behold the lamb. You know, when you say the lamb, the people understood. They always offered lambs for their sin sacrifices. And he says, here is the lamb of God. He is going to take away the sin of the world once and for all. You don't have to continue offering sacrifices anymore. Now that was the introduction of Jesus. You know, I was thinking, I used to think of the whole world when I was young, but I was thinking of Sri Lanka. And I to told Pastor Dishan, there is 31 million people how many of them are saved? And I said, at least a million. He said, no, no, far less. Last night, you know, I always get a good burger brooder from Paul uh, Beeling and his wife. They both came to see me. And I said, Paul, I am a little shocked to think that 21 million people are in Sri Lanka. I said, what nonsense? There's 22 million. And I said, at least can half a million be Christians who are saved? He said, no. There were no statistics. She said, far less than that. You know, I always, when they bring the brooder, though I don't eat sweets, I eat a piece of brooder that very time they bring. Because that comes fresh. But I didn't want to eat because I thought I'd get choked. You know, I have not tasted the brooder yet. Why? I thought in this land there is over 32 million people and how many are saved? I said, good Lord, I couldn't sleep. You know, I thought my sugar must have gone up. And I was getting cold in the night. Why? Think of more than 31 million people going into a lost eternity. I thought, who is responsible? Not the angelic host from heaven. The angels can never share the gospel of salvation. But when Jesus rose from the dead, he committed that message to us. Go ye into all the world 
and preach the gospel to every creature. I remember in Toronto, I met a man years ago. He had the name, I think it's Wilbur Smith. I'm very bad at name. He's a Smith anyway. He, well, and I was talking about getting people saved. And he said, Colton, remember all these fanfares and superstars. Evangelists cannot save the world. No individual can do it. But he said the day must come. The whole church must take the whole gospel to the whole world. And we think it is a little church that can do it. The whole church. My prayer is thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in Sri Lanka through the whole body of Christ. You know, friends, we must do our part. I got a few phone calls over a message that was written in the times of Ceylon. And it was written by Mr. Dilan Fernando. And my name was Cotter, so they were calling me. See, he said, this is a businessman. Pastor Colton, do you know him? I said, I know the family personally. And they said, you think I said, if you don't believe the word, at least believe the picture that is appearing in the papers. He has testified to his healing. Friends, we are here for a purpose. And God's purpose is lost. If you and I don't take the gospel to Sri Lanka, one day we are going to stand before God. He's going to ask an account of me and you about our living, how we live, why did we live. And then he's going to ask an account of the lost souls in this land. One day, when I was with my wife, I was driving down, we had only... We didn't have so many hotels. We had Cream House, Melbourne. And there was a board, you know, in the second floor. If you can walk, I can teach you to dance. I told my wife, it's a good slogan. If I'm going to tell people, if you can talk, I can make you a preacher. Every person who can talk have a responsibility. And this gospel cannot be preached by going to a theological college and learning. I thank God for theological college. I was the principal of Assemblies of God Bible College for 25 years. All what we do is teach and give you a certificate. And you can hang that on the wall. I got two doctorates. I don't know even where my certificates are. Why? By their fruits, you will know them. Not by their big attainments. You know, it's a sorrowful thing. Because we had a pastor's meeting here. We had over uh, 1,000, nearly 400 odd pastors and their wives. I talked to them straight. You know, friend, this is not the time to pat your back. This is not the time to say how good you are. This is not the time to say your social ministry is, uh, I mean, God-ordained. I want to tell you, I have seen three dead people raised. I have seen hundreds of people healed, but none of them will go to heaven. Unless and until they make a personal decision to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, the greatest miracle is not what you see, is what you, what you receive. You become a new species, a new creation. You know, Jesus, John the Baptist says, there is the lamb. The lamb they understood was a burnt offering. He was life eternal, but he came to die. Whose death? Your death and my death. He took upon himself. 
why the wages of sin is death and eternal separation from god that's why he cried out on the cross my god my god why did you forsake me he didn't say my father he cried your cry and my cry my god he was forsaken rejected what a price if christianity was another philosophy or another religion you and i can be excused but christ without christ people will never have eternity for there is none other name given under heaven whereby people can be saved other than the name of jesus and he took the responsibility when he said i am the way the truth the life no man come to the father but my or through me if that is the responsibility that god placed you know when i went and met this man this mr i think wilbur smith pastor he had this church name people's church i took to my mind one day i will build a people's church and why it the slogans were robbed by other people the community stopped it he says it is by the people of the people for the people but this church was built to give the gospel to every person in sri lanka you know friends think of 32 million people and a small fraction is going to go to heaven this period of time every prophecy is almost fulfilled and jesus should be here right now but why is he delaying the bible says he is long suffering not just suffering when his son died on the cross he is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance how can they repent unless they hear how can they hear unless someone tell them you know that's why i said i didn't need the brew the last night i would have got choked 32 million at least say 31 million are going to a lost eternity and you and i are enjoying the birth of jesus what a selfish way to do this you know i i don't mean words no if people like me they like me if they don't like me they don't like me for what i say but i have to tell you the truth ye shall know the truth and the truth will set you free how many souls have you won i asked somebody oh pastor i don't want uh, to take the glory i said no man i'm asking how many times did you preach the gospel how many people were convicted how many people decided for christ you brag about all the other miracles i prayed for the deaf i prayed for the dumb i prayed you know when i went to uh, uh holland uh while i was walking uh the people who were advertising in their shops so stopped me he said do you know the theaters i said yes who are you i said i am pastor colton ah you are the man we wanted to verify things i said i can't verify anything i only know she was a cripple god healed her. you asked the doctors for the verification friends time up if you can talk i can make you an oracle of god that you can be god's mouthpiece in sri lanka that you can be take the place of jesus christ who walked on the dusty roads of judea and samaria and galilee you know he is calling he was walking on the dust on the seashore of galilee he saw a man throwing a net he said come follow me he asked no questions he didn't bargain he didn't ask what i am going to get out of this he followed who was that simon peter 
as they went a little further he saw a man mending his net with a old man and another servant he said come follow me he left the net the boat as well as his father with the hired servants and walked who is that john the beloved you know why we don't get god's blessing because we are bargaining for earthly blessings to serve him many people you know i went with a man one day abroad he gave a great prophecy and he was a chinese man i mean the man who prophesied i won't tell who is a chinese man you are going to prosper in your business you do this you do that and after we were coming in the car he asked me what do you think of the word that god gave me i said brother it was not god's word you gave a sanctified human word i remember in colombia when dr cho and i used to have meeting people come running behind so cho and i had to run why they want to touch and one day i said cho i can't run and why did they they, they touch me and said you have a word from the lord for me i said yes go and read the bible i mean don't be deceived god is not mocked whatsoever a man so what that shall you also reap time for you to wake up you know and we have to be a living sacrificial i mean a sacrifice romans 12:1 says beloved i wish above all things you know not, not that uh, i i want you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god friends you don't know the divine potential in you i thought if i'm 60 i am 80 or years now 60 years i am able to preach here you think you can't do i have no qualification i have only seventh standard in singular couldn't speak a word of english i am not a, from a big family i am from a very poor family and when i brought my family i didn't have money to buy uh for two children uh iran and tishan were one year apart we mother had no milk i didn't have money to buy a packet of milk i never appealed to anybody somebody sent me uh, two packets of tea i used to make tea when they cry and give plain tea one preacher said you're a fool they'll get mal- malnutrition and they'll die i want to tell you friends God didn't bless the cows and the milk God blessed the faith of people see krisanta and iran today you must the just will not be by not live by logic by reasoning but by trusting god's word you know we need to reach this island i ask god give me give one tenth of the people in colombo to the people's church that they'll be trained and they'll be sent to all the nooks and the corners of this land and i'm starting that i am 86 but i'm starting it why to challenge if you want to serve god you ask pastor dishan come and meet me in one year i will train you to start a church See why with God all things are possible no time god is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance how about you if you can talk i can make you the most powerful preacher i tell you i have seen in sierra leone i went for a pastors meeting no pastors young man we had no hotel we were sleeping on the floor on a mat that night this guy called david i said david i can't sleep let's have a talk i talked to him i said you can be god's man next side was the leper colony david didn't understand but i poured into him for 2 hours today he's a mighty man in africa i went to south america panama 
talk to a couple who didn't even invite me because they had a tin shack. They had about 15 people. I was put to churches. I told Edwin and Dalis, you are going to be used of God. And this is the way to do it. Today they have the biggest church and he's a great man in all of South America, America and even in other parts. God can make you the greatest. You don't have to be a superstar. If you are willing to be a living sacrifice for Jesus and do his will. You know, the other day I was talking with Gerald. He says, no, Pastor Gordon, I'm old. No? Old is gold. Remember that. See, there is no age limit in the kingdom. You can be used of God however young you are, however old you are, if you will say, here am I. Lord, take me. Won't you do that? Are you going to let this 31 million people go to hell and just enjoy Christmas? What is the greatest joy when one soul repents and comes into the kingdom of God? The joy you receive can never be compared with all the happiness of this world. It is time to rise up and say, here am I. God, use me. You know, I don't have knowledge. I was preaching in Stuttgart, Germany, to all the GIs of the American army. Now somebody came after us and said, would you come? I'm a professor to Munich and speak to our university students. I said, sure. I went. All the dons were seated and all the university students were seated down. And this guy who introduced me tore me into pieces. You know, these missionaries have gone, brainwashed this fellow, told there's power in the blood. The church is the blood-washed church. And he ridiculed. And these guys began to throw paper balls, bottles, shoes onto the platform. And these dons were clapping their hands. He said, this fellow has no knowledge, no qualification. He has only seven standards in a in a local language. I said, Lord, if the flow opens, I'll go through. But then the Holy Spirit, who are you? Who are they? You are my son. They are sinners. They need the gospel. I said, how, Lord? This fellow is really tearing me down. When God said, you are the son of God, the spirit of God, confirmed that to me. I jumped up. I came running. I plucked his microphone. And I said, sir, I have no knowledge, you said. I have a knowledge you don't understand. I said, this morning, when you went for a breakfast table, your wife hit you with, your, with a cup of coffee. You had to go and change that shirt. Everybody got silent. Why? Because your wife is suspecting you with this Don's wife who is seated on this platform that you are carrying on with her. Everybody got silent. Why? They knew the story. I said, that is the knowledge I have. Not of myself, but of God. You have it, brother. You have it, sister. Why are you lingering? You're wasting time. I preached the message. God gave me the anointing. When I gave the altar call, more than half of the people who were throwing shoes and bottles were at the altar. All the dons were kneeling by their chairs. Your eyes have not seen. Your ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into your heart the things that God can do through you. If you live this happy-go-life and take care of all your earthly business, you won't take one cent out of the world and you will have to give an account to God. I'm challenging you. Give of yourself unconditionally. Without any reservation, say, here am I. I lay myself upon that altar. Lord, you gave you all for me. I have nothing but a broken life. I give it to you. If I live, you will come and tell me, Pastor Colton, I am amazed at myself. Not at what others are doing. I am amazed at myself. I have been lingering. I have been feeding on the crumbs. And I didn't realize I am a child 
a royal son, a royal daughter of God. And what God has kept for me, no man can ever destroy. This Christmas, the child of babe, the babe of Bethlehem must be exalted. He is the coming king of kings and the lord of lords. But still, now he is the savior of the world. What would you do with this message? Will you let 31 million people in Sri Lanka go to hell because you failed? Or would you say to yourself today, I have decided and I made up my mind, I am determined. I will carry this message to the nooks and the corners of this land. If you want to be trained, I am starting a training school. I talked to Pastor Rishan also. To put people and to bring them out as the royalty of God. With great passion, with great anointing and to have apostolic, prophetic ministries to the people who are still living in darkness. Your decision determines the destiny of Sri Lanka. Remember that. Even if I don't live long, may this linger in your heart and mind. Your decision, personal decision, decides the destiny of this nation. Shall we pray? Bow your heads. Close your heart. Eyes, bow your hearts to the Lord. You might say, I'm old. You know, you are a person that God has kept here. Even in your old age. You might say, I'm too young. Why did God allow you to come? You say, I am a sick person, though I'm in middle age. Why is God still keeping you? I have problems. Why is God still allowing you to linger with them? God has a plan. No man on earth, no demon in hell, no power in the universe can destroy that plan that God has for you. I want to pray that the Lord will inspire you to say, I will give the rest of the days of my life wholly wholeheartedly to you. I will be spent for the kingdom. I will live for the perishing souls in this land. I will do my utmost to bring the highest that God has for the nation of Sri Lanka. If that is so, I'll pray for you. While all heads are bowed, everybody praying with their eyes closed, lift up your hand and say, Pastor Colton, I want to be that man. I want to be that woman. I'll pray for you where you are. Yes, I see these hands. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It takes divine courage. It takes divine... Remember, I have been by the bedside of many dying people in my lifetime. I have heard one man shout and say, Pastor Colton, it's too late. It's too late. I couldn't stop it. He died. I hope that will not happen to any one of us. So if you want to be in the center of God's will and do what God wants you to do, keep your hands raised. I'll pray for you. Praise God. I see your hand. God sees your hand. And God loves you. God has a plan for you. God will never fail you. Precious Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone who has been convinced through the conviction they have received from your word. Grant unto them the grace to do your will and to spend the rest of the days of their lives, not for themselves, but for the kingdom of God and to bring the righteousness of God and to save the nation of Sri Lanka. Father, honor their faith. Meet with them. May I have the joy of hearing that many are going to do God's will and save the nation. We give you praise, glory and honor in Jesus' precious name.